welcome to this week's Dirt Shed Show with me, Martin Ashton, and this guy. Hello, everybody. Rich Payne here. How are you doing? How's it going, Mark? Uh, very well, thank you, sir. What about yourself? It's nice to be here, kind of, in the Dirt Shed Show once again. Uh, you are looking ghostly. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> ghostly. Look at that. Look at the effect. Love Ooh. it. Ooh. Love Ooh. it. Ooh. God. That's scary. <laughs> no, I'm very good, mate. I'm very good. I had a good week riding. How about yourself? Yeah, very cool. Um, we've uh, we've been getting into slightly more warmer temperatures oh. in the UK here. So yes. I'm just thinking if you're getting out on the trail and starting to sweat a little bit, maybe uh, the, the chance of wearing just one layer, maybe, then uh, I just want to point you to, before we get going, <gasps> on tech tees that are over in oh. the GMBN shop. Just getting these out of my shopping bag a minute. We've got the, uh, the Into the Woods tech tees. They're very cool. We've got this one and we've got it in a nice grey as well. Well, Ooh. that's still in the bag, fresh. Um, we've got those things in the store for you to uh, support the channel and, of course, look mm. cool out on the trails. So don't forget to do that whilst you've uh, got some time after the dirt shed. Um, of course. Now, Rich, this week I've got some cool stuff to talk about because I wanna, I've want i been looking yeah. at this Atherton documentary that's coming out uh. this week. It's a super high production value documentary over on the GCM Plus app. Now, yes. this, this documentary is all about the Athertons, who you know very well. I do, yeah, I do. Grew up with the, uh, grew up with the, the dastardly trio, if you like. Went to school with them. So yeah, <laughs> I, I've, got to, I've got some stories. You've got some inside knowledge. And, oh, and this, this documentary blew me away because it just shows uh, a lot about their history in the sport, but yep. also the, leg the legacy that they're trying to leave in the sport, um, and, and which they're doing with uh, absolute great success with their bike park and their bike brand, of course, as yeah. well. But what, what got me thinking, because they're such an extraordinary family results-wise, you know, I mean, they've, yep. they've won everything in their... Uh, area of mountain biking which is oh, obviously downhill yeah. four cross and jewel bit of enduro from Athy but yeah. I was just thinking is it an advantage right to be to have that sibling rivalry um, I know in my Ooh. life I, I've definitely benefited from it I'm the youngest of three boys what about yourself are you oldest yeah, I, or you're, you look like I'm the oldest yeah can't oldest. you tell I'm, I'm the oldest mm. yeah I've got a two year younger brother and there was definitely some yeah. rivalry, I tell you that, mate, yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah, I mean, uh, it, it really, do, you can't avoid it, can you? Uh, no. It, like, brother, <laughs> sister, I think you're always going to have a bit of rivalry. It's almost yeah. like well, you just push each other on a bit, or certainly push each other to the limit, I know that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's not, and it's not rare actually. Because if you think about it in sport, we've got people like you've got the uh, you've got the Williams sisters in tennis, yep. and then you've got like uh, even in sports like uh, baseball, you've got the DiMaggio's and the Molinas, uh, trios oh. of brothers who did incredibly well. Oh, right. Then you've got maybe. Uh, what about in Moto, Moto GP? You've got the Marquez brothers, both on HRC, uh, uh, racing against yeah. each other. Um, yeah. There's so many, uh, and in mountain biking, it's not even rare. The Athertons are special, but but the sibling rivalry success isn't rare. You've got Ed Masters and Win Masters, and of then you've course, got Tracy yeah. Hanna and Mick Hanna. Yeah. I mean, it All goes on. But is it a super advantage to be good at your sport or good at MTB if you've got siblings to push you on? Hmm. Do you know what? That is a blooming good mm. question. And I think my answer would be yes. Especially yeah, when it's, it's like off. mixed, so boy and girl, I reckon. So Rachel, I think, will probably openly admit that having two mega gnarly older brothers will help push <laughs> on her riding. The same with Tarny Seagrave. Having Chaos yeah, as, a, as a brother, he, you know, the kid's nuts, isn't he? And it helps push her on. So I think yeah, it does help. absolutely. Absolutely. So maybe... If you're out there and you're riding and, and you're thinking, how can I push myself on, and you haven't got siblings, then maybe you need to start lining someone up, a best friend uh, of, <laughs> of someone, something of that nature. You need to start aiming at, you know, lining up, get them in the crosshairs 
and, and, and see if you can push your riding on by comparing yourself to that person. Mm. Because essentially that's what happens with a sibling, isn't it? You're like, yeah. I am gonna get you. And then by yeah. getting that person, <laughs> you get better. That's how it yeah. works, isn't it? it yeah, 100%, it is. no one wants to be the lesser of the two, sadly. So yeah, no, <laughs> if no. you need to get on out there and adopt a brother or sister, go do it and it'll make your riding better. <laughs> is that what we're saying? <laughs> Are we That's saying what that? we're saying, I think. That's okay. what we're saying. Um, <laughs> right. But I tell you what, um, do not miss this documentary this week. Yeah. Head over to the GCM Plus app. Um, download, download that. It is it is fantastic. Yeah. This app. I it's mean, well worth you know, a watch. I don't like to I don't like to big up the roadie guys that much, but this app mm. is next level, and the documentaries on it. And there is, like, I think there's like. 30, 40 documentaries on there. I, I've not watched yeah. all of them yet, but they are like such amazing documentaries uh, and they span across all sorts of things about cycling, not just road riding. And like I no. said, the Atherton's documentary this week is a banger. Do not miss it. Um, it's fantastic. Yes. And just to get your well juices said. flowing, here <laughs> is a little teaser. The Athertons are a family from the southwest of England. The whole family all won a World Cup on the same weekend, which has never, ever been done before. They're a unique unit and pretty damn scary. I won't want to race against them. Hi there, my name's Tom and welcome back to another weekly instalment of Dirt Shed News where we review the top stories from the mountain bike world this week. We'll kick things off with five new bikes and a new direction from Saracen. Now as soon as we'd filmed the news last week, Saracen released a brand new range of aerials, the 30, 60, 80, E150 and Junior, all of which use Saracen's TLR linkage driven single pivot design and feature alloy frames only. If you add 100 to the numbered models, you get their rear wheel travel. So the 30 and the 60 are 29 er trail enduro models and the 80 is a 650B park bike. There's really progressive geometry throughout the range too, with long reach numbers, slack head angles and long wheelbases to match. The junior model is one size only aimed at riders between 125 and 145 centimeters tall. It's got 24 inch wheels, a 1x11 drivetrain and 120 mm of air sprung suspension. To expand on the changes to their lineup, Saracen have chosen to move to direct sales, meaning they can offer the new bikes at a much more competitive price. They also plan on using the established Madison Shimano network of distributors to act as service stations to support their otherwise online only service. It's a cool change of direction for them, moving away from carbon and the more boutique nature of the previous aerial. Right, it was only a matter of time. Adidas have released the Velo Samba. The classic Samba has received a clipless plate in its sole for a two bolt cleat, but other than that retains its well-known styling. The Adidas website states it's for city riding and indoor training, but we're sure we'll see it on the trails paired with a Troy Lee Adidas kit sometime soon. Maybe not at races, but never say never. Now, when Sam Hill recommends you someone's sponsor, you tend to pay attention to that recommendation. That's just what's happened for Dan Booker, a young Aussie rider from Tasmania, now living up the road from Sam, who has just signed for Nukeproof. During some time away from racing, he managed the building of the trails at Medina Bike Park, which reignited his passion for going fast. He's since racked up a series of impressive national results and three top 30 finishes at EWS events during 2019. This story has a twist though. Dan is not on social media, which further goes to prove that a rider's social presence isn't the only important thing these days. Instead, it's having the raw bike skill to get a recommendation of a guy like Sam Hill. Top work, Dan. Right, an unfortunate bit of news from the UCI here. The first round of the downhill, Maribor, which was scheduled for mid-April, will now be postponed until sometime in August. The good news is it's only postponed, not cancelled. As always, it's tough planning events when the goalposts are constantly shifting, but you've got to respect the decisions being made for public safety. Trial star Tomomi Nishikubo has got his wings. He dropped a video recently featuring Danny Mack and Fabio Widmer before sharing the visit from Red Bull athletes and managers surprising him with his new helmet. You can see just how much it means to the guy. He's over the moon to be presented with the coveted Red Bull lid. And we can't wait to see how ludicrous his edits are going to be now. Right, a double whammy of suspension signings quickly for you now. Adolf Silver will be running X-Fusion suspension for 2021 and going big on their recently updated H3C rear shock. Great to see Adolf pick up more sponsors after not landing a frame deal for this year. Another brand making moves this year is Intend. 
Juliana team rider Rafaela Richter will be running the high-end German brand alongside her teammate Tanya Neighbour. Rafaela is another rider to watch out for now that privateer life is in the rearview window, and she's getting some support from brands like Intend with her racing. We've got some results from a bit of early season XT racing now. There was actually a pretty stacked field for the Internationale d'Italia series in Andorra. Yolanda Neff took the win from Mona Mittervalner, with Anne Terpstra rounding out the top three. Lars Forster won the men's race just 11 seconds ahead of Viktor Koretsky, who was only three seconds ahead of Milan Bada, so tight at the top of that one. Okay, it's time for something sick. It's over to Toff for the sickest thing of the week. Cheers, Tom. Hey, everybody. Right, so this week's sickest thing is Zachary Cope's crazy nine-stair upride 360 bump jump out. It's actually insane. So for those of you who've not really seen anything like this before, it's a BMX inspired trick and it's a lot harder than it looks like. I mean, you've got to contact the stair set absolutely perfectly with front wheel and back wheel at the same time, otherwise you risk just getting a puncher. You've then got to maintain being balanced the whole way up the stair set. And what makes it really difficult is when you try and pop out, you can't really carve that much because you're on steps and also, you need to pop off something. So you need to pop off both corners of the stair at the same time. It's really tricky and it takes quite a bit of luck. So one of the reasons why you can't pull up and carve is you actually risk clipping your back wheel on the, the next step up, which would make you high side. A high side is when you're carving one way and then you get bounced the other way. It's really popular in motorsport and it's hideous crashes. Right, so Zach was actually doing this on 27 and a half inch wheels. And I don't actually know if it would be harder on 29 inch wheels or not, because a 29 inch wheel is going to go up the stairs better, but be slightly harder to 360 out. And then the 27 and a half inch wheels might be slightly harder to go up the stairs, but then slightly easier to three out. And if you're about to comment like, whoa, who's this Zach dude? I've never heard of him. Why is he on it? Well, he's just a dude having fun on his bike. He used to race cross country at a sort of state level. He was creeping up into national level but it just got way too expensive for him right so zach works in his local bike shop it's called bent cyclery seems like a pretty cool little shop he actually also teaches youth cross country for nica that's the national interscholastic cycling association right nailed that one right so that's my sickest thing this week zach copes upstairs ride right to 360 out it's time to go back to tom and the dirt shed right thanks for that toff one more thing for me before I let you go. I've got some results from our Crank Brothers competition. Three of you have won yourself some Crank Brothers Stamp lace shoes and Stamp 7 pedals to go with them. Congratulations to Daniel Dinsmore, Evan Bradbury, and Tobias Strayler. Keep an eye on the emails you entered with and we will be in touch soon. Okay, that is all from me. Back to you guys in the dirt shed and I'll see you next week. Competition time, and we're giving away Puck's brand new Cortal Race helmet and Devour riding glasses. Now, there's a link in the description down below. Go in there, add all your details, and get the chance to win this combination. We're giving away five of these to five lucky viewers. Uh, the competition stops on the 19th of March, and we'll be announcing the winners on the 23rd of March. So, good luck to all you beautiful viewers because this combo is so fresh for those summer months coming up. Look at that, Quartal Race in orange. Mips, Rico, ah, oh, and these? Man, I can't wait for them sunny days to pop up because I'm gonna be looking fresh, brah. Good luck, because this, I'm telling you, is a cool prize. We are in Hacks and Bodges. <laughs> yes, here we go. First one. Love this, Rich. This is amazing. Whoa. Now, if you were in, if you were in with a chance of winning a GMBM race top like these guys are, this is the kind of level you've got to be aiming at. Look at this. Yeah. Talking about the Athertons, an amazing family outing of mountain <laughs> bikers. Look at this. The whole family going out mountain biking, all powered by one man, Christian, who got oh, so much. He's got one, two. So hang on a second. There's the there's the car. I've I'm bike. struggling to figure this out. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, okay, so he's on the cargo bike oh. in the middle. Oh, okay. He's got two he's got two bikes up front, and then he's um, got his own his own full sus on the back, which he's towing along. Whoa. I mean that is unreal. And he's done it all by just collecting this little uh, add-on piece at the bike rack on the back of his cargo bike. Yeah. And basically, and then his wife rides along in front and he's he's basically bringing the whole family with him. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So no one rides the bike at the back. 
He just takes no, that, that so that when he bike. gets to the trail center, he can just shred. Bang him. How good is that? What? That's good, isn't it? That's a good one. That's a good hack. I like that this. Is this, cool. is a, that... this is a good start to hacks. Yeah, um, yeah, it's definitely a hack. Um, right, nice. next one, right, we get we get tons of bike racks in bike mm. caves, okay? We get lots of them, so it's really difficult to get yours on the screen if that's what you're trying to show us in Hacks and Bodges. But yeah. Dan has done it really well. I really like the way he's done this because he's used this simple wood chocking system on the top to yeah. sort of uh, turn, the, turn the bars to 45 degrees, or maybe a little bit less, would we say 40 degrees, and, and basically, <laughs> That's holding the bikes in place really, really neatly. What do you think? Are you laughing at my degree? My degree in this? 41 I degrees. Actually, I think that's 41. actually, I'd probably say, nah, I'd go 37.5. Yeah, I no, think it is actually below 40. Now I look at it, I think it's below 40. I don't know. It's very difficult to say from this angle. <laughs> Dude, I think we're getting hung up on the details here. Get it? Hung up hung by up. the bike rack. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Come on, Love I'm it. on fire. Come anyway. on. Yeah, that is amazing. That is no, amazing. Good, um, but not as amazing as the rack. Um, and I think uh, this is just a really good example. And this one looks like one I could actually achieve. I don't yeah, know. Like, no, yeah, is... I could get some nails and some wood and make this happen. Yeah, I like it. Good job. So it yeah, fits six yeah, at the moment. Yeah. And he said he knew he'd get more. So he just basically adds them on. Good work, Dan. Yeah, nice it's one. very cool. Very cool. Yeah, um, right. And what have we got lastly, next? Now, check out this little video, okay? So Nick came back from one of his rides um, and look at the cassette wobbling around on his Yeesh. hub. But basically, the quick release is the only thing keeping this on. Okay, yeah. so he takes his Hope Hub apart, realizes that the, the through axles, well, it's not the through axle, it's the actual axle piece of the hub itself has snapped, okay? Whoa. But then he fixes it by yeah. pressing this steel tube right through the center, bringing the two pieces back together again, and voila, he's got a hub that works once more perfectly, and he says it only added 38 grams, which isn't is, that bad. That's pretty good, go is that a hack or a bodge? Has he bodged it together, or has he hacked? Mm. A design flaw, it's a maybe. Bodge. How does it work? It's a bodge. It's a bodge. It's okay. a bodge. Yeah, it's a bodge. A design flaw from Hope. What are you talking about? Oh my God! Can't believe you said that. Sorry. Um, Hope. It's a it's, it's a bodge. <laughs> but this is hacks and bodges. And Rich, you have now got to decide who's getting the motocross race top this weekend. Um, is it going to be Dan? Uh... Or... I hopped back to my motorcycle days. Then did you hear that? I, I, I called saw, out I a GMBN top. race top. Yeah, I always, even though I did motorcycle trials, I always called them a motocross top, but they are, it's, it's a race top. We were just top. talking about it before top. this as well, so. Yeah, yeah I know, I know. No, I'm going to give it to, <laughs> I'm going to give it to Christian, because I like the fact that he's got a rig set up that he can take his yeah. whole family to the trails and still shred. That's cool. So congratulations, Christian. That well motocross done, Christian. top is on its way to you. <laughs> uh, very cool. Um, if you've got a hack or a bodge or anything else you want to send into the dirt shed, whether it be a bike vault or one of your fails, one of your sends, or maybe something else you just want us to see, yeah. make sure you head over to the GMBN uploader. The link is in the description down below and on screen right now. So you've got no excuses and we love you getting involved in the show. So don't yes. miss out on a chance to do that. Right, now it's time to catch up with Rick McLaughlin at EWA. Ooh. And we've also got a very special interview with Neil Donahue talking to uh, Rachel Atherton herself. Check this whoa. out. Hello, Dirt Shed. And as you can see, the weather is slightly better in Scotland this week. And we are free, thank goodness, off the culinary dungeon that is my kitchen. Now, the news from the Enduro World Series this week is that all entries for all events are now live and there are only a few spots remaining. If you want to come racing with us this summer, please, please, please head over to EnduroWorldSeries.com now and get your spot booked to avoid disappointment. There's only a few spots left and that is at the time I'm recording this, so you really need to act now. EWS E50, EWS E100, we still have a few of those spots left if you're a one or two battery racer. And we've also got some EWS 80 and EWS 100 spots remaining too. If you've missed out on the EWS round you want, go back, check the page. There may still be spaces in those races left. We've just been absolutely bowled over. I mean, the Tweed Valley event basically broke the internet, it crashed the site, or the demand was that high. 
We've also had this week the announcement of all the teams that are officially registered to race with us this season and it makes for some interesting reading if you are a race geek like me. A few changes on there that may well have gone unheralded and are under the radar. One of the most notable EWS E will see Husqvarna Racing officially field the team and riding that bike is going to be none other than former UCI World Cup winner Alex Fayol. So definitely one to look out for there. An EWS pro in trouble this week is Florian Nikolai, the Trek Factory racing rider who came second in the world on in the 2018 season, that dramatic 2018 season behind Sam Hill, has injured his shoulder in training. We've reached out to Trek for more info, so hopefully we can update you on that soon. But, I mean, shoulder injuries, of course, vary in severity quite dramatically, but it was enough to see a full medical team chopper him off the hill. So, all thoughts are with Flying Flow this week, and hopefully we will see him back at the races this summer, and I can update you on that next week. Right, got Rachel Afton in the dirt shed, virtually. Uh, Rach, I've been watching the documentary on GCM+. Plus. Uh, how does it feel for you, looking back on some of your achievements in racing? Um, it's definitely one of my favourite subjects to look back at what I've achieved. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing really to, to look back when you're in the moment and you're racing and you're kind of doing it and you're winning or, or losing, you know, you, you're so focused, you don't really think about it and the bigger picture. Um, so to have like a time to sort of look back at it and, and have it all laid out in front of you, it's, it's pretty amazing and, and yeah, it's, it's nice, it's special. And it's, I don't want to, I should never ask uh, a lady her age, but it looks back, you know, looking at G and Dan's history as well, it brings back memories for me. But, you know, you guys have been racing a long time now. It's been a big part of your lives. Oh, yeah, my whole entire life, really. Um, it's, I've no idea who I am without racing. You know, I've never not raced since I was a tiny little kid. Yeah, absolutely. And I know from uh, experience as well that, that Dan, your eldest, eldest brother, is definitely a sort of, he's a go-getter. He's a, a driving force behind, behind, not just the family, behind anyone he sort of gets his teeth into, you know, the local kids, anything. So do you ever wonder what he might be thinking up next? <laughs> I dread to think what he's thinking up next. But I mean, that's, Dan is such, you know, an amazing guy. Sometimes he drives you absolutely mad because he's so focused and single-minded and he's so dedicated, you know, to the to the vision, the cause. And really, this path that he's on, or where we are now, this is the path he's been on for his whole life, really. Everything has been leading to this point. And he says that himself, that everything he's done has been because he's wanted to do this, you know, have like a mountain biking mecca, a bike park where people can come and they can develop their skills and he can be a part of that and he can create tracks to kind of really push them on and the bike company is something that he's always always talked about since he was you know at school making bikes for projects and stuff so it's it's amazing to have Dan in the family and in the businesses. In the video as well in documentary we see uh, we see you on the beautiful Dovey beach uh, at Abu Dhabi and it just shows, you know, you talk about how important life away from bikes is to you as well. Um, but you obviously, you went out some uh, exciting news recently. You're having a, a child, so that's going to be like the ultimate life away from racing, I suppose. How does that feel so far? You're going to be responsible for another human being. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I mean, it, I've put the news out on sort of social media, you know, so it's been amazing to hear people's responses especially women you know in the sport um really interesting stories and i feel like i just feel stoked you know so excited and for me having that life outside of racing is has been really important and i think really paramount to the success i've had in the last few years i feel like when you find that sort of place that you're happy and the people surrounding you and the people you're with and your partner and your family and friends, when your life is outside of racing is, is happy, it isn't the racing that defines you. You know, for so long it was racing and the results that defined me and that was so intense. If I didn't win, I, I couldn't really cope with life because I didn't feel like I deserved it. I think that's a really important life lesson is to to be in a place that, you know, it's not entirely about the business and the racing and, and for me that's living out here and 
living in the mountains and, and been kind of having the freedom to just escape, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, thanks, Rach. Uh, it's great to have you virtually in the shed. And I'll definitely encourage the viewers to get over onto GCM Plus, check out the documentary, plus loads of other cycling docks over there. Thanks. Cheers, guys. Okay, caption contest time. Um, Rich, you were the star of our <laughs> caption contest photo last week. Look at this, we are uh, muck off spraying some foam. Um, oh, I, dear. I, I looked through all the captions, right, and there was just, this one sang out, this is the winner, okay? I'm not even gonna compare it to everyone else. I think this is the best one. Uh, and it is winning a GMBN mug. It is from Oscar B. Um, yeah. <laughs> go on, Rich, give us this one. Oscar B says, caption contest, say hello to my little friend. <laughs> yeah, it's the Scar, yeah. is it Scarface? Scarface reference, yeah. that Scarface. one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, That is a, a very cool one, that was a standout winner. So Oscar, you get the GMBN mug this yes. week. Um, but if you're not Oscar, Ooh. don't worry, because here's your chance to get your hands on a GMBN mug next week with this photo. Give us a caption for that. Um, put Oof. it in the caps in the comments down below, and we will maybe be giving a mug to you next week. Um, mm. So good luck. Get involved in the show. That's where you do it. Um, it's all happening. Right. Yep. It is time to take a look at what we've got coming up on the channel this week. We've got some banging videos. Um, we're getting some yes. great momentum with the mountain bike season in the UK starting here. We're getting very excited. So take a look yeah. at all these vids we've got coming. Sometimes there's no way around it. You're just gonna have to deal with it and it might not be pretty, but here's some tips on how to deal with heavy landings. First category, and it's called, I did not see that coming. Tom is up first, or rather down first, slammed his back into that tree, but got away with just some bruising. Lucas didn't want to waste a single megabyte of space on his GoPro memory card, so he hit this line absolutely lit. Unfortunately, he didn't remember to turn the handlebars when necessary. Right, where to ride? Now, Trail Center has something for everyone. There's an abundance of trails to choose from, and they're all color graded. Yes, yeah, starting with the first one, a green trail. Now, this is going to be very mellow. To trail building, it's a bit of a dark art, but it can be really rewarding, you know, like building your own trails, seeing these things take shape. And luckily today, I'm joined by old Affa here, Dan Afferton, and uh, well, we're currently hiding in the sawmill up at Dovey Bike Park because the weather's minging outside, but uh, I think it's about time uh, we headed out. What do you reckon? Yeah, it's pretty noisy in here. I can't really hear myself think. I know. We're having to shout <laughs> a little bit. Should we go see some of your creations? Yeah, man. Let's do it. All right, well, let's head out there. Okay, we're in the bike vault and the best bike this week is winning a super nice t-shirt, one of my personal Ooh. favorites. Now, last week, Rich, Blake was yes. in the show and he challenged everyone out there to send us their hardtails. So this is a uh, hardtail special this week. Okay. Um, and uh, what we're starting out with. Right, we're starting out with James from Michigan and his Ribble oh, yeah. HT725. Now. Looks pretty nice. nice. It's got a one-up dropper, carbon bars, uh, one-up pedals, I presume. Uh, Hope Fortis 30 wheels, an absolute yeah, Mazda, an oval chainring. Nice. Yeah, Mazda's on it. Love it. Like that mm. a lot. Um, what are we giving? Yeah. That's a super nice from me, dude. That's a super nice. Go on, Ed. Do you want to mm. ring the bell? Hit the bell. No, Go on. Do you, oh, well, no, you, you want to ring it? it? You do it. Uh, no, you do it. You sure? You do it. Okay. Yeah, oh, no, no, this nice. Good one, James. Right. What have we got next, Mark? Ooh, right, next up, this is from Evan and his Pipe Dream Moxie. Check this out. I mean, oh, he is, is not cool. going unnoticed. That is no. cool. I like that a lot. I do not like the colour of his helmet compared to the bike and his componentry. It does not mix very well. <laughs> but this is about the bike vault, not the helmet. So it's hard True. to fault the bike, really, man. It's cool. It's really That's cool. Some, I like yeah. it a lot. I'm liking it's the pink nice. and anodized it's blue. It's nice. Yeah, full nice, that. Full nice. Nice. Good job, Evan. Um, yeah, good stuff. 
Um, next up, look at this one. Ooh. Ooh. We're Ghost. getting into the, the realms of XC now. Oh. I like it, the description. Oh. The description that we've got here from Bart. Love my bike. <laughs> That's it. That's all he's saying. That is Loves all you're it. getting from him. Uh, what, what more do you need to know? Another, another nice. Now, Rich, just talk me through the uh, etiquette on seat posts. Uh, drop a seat post there. He's got the drop a bit slightly up from the seat clamp itself. Is that cool yeah. or not cool? Well, do you know what? It's an XC bike, so we're going to go for form over fashion on this one, I dare say, a little bit. So, depending on what drop okay. he's got, obviously, when it's at its maximum height, he might need yeah. to run it outside, you know, like, quite high, raised above the collar. Otherwise, yeah. genu genuinely, generally even, Mark, I would say <laughs> you would run a longer dropper so you could just slam it down all the way. So, yeah. I, won't, I do you know, like I won't go too heavy on him for that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, now, but but because nice. of that, I'm giving it a nice. I'm just going nice. Likewise. All right. Nice. Next oh, up, we've got. Oh, okay, I like yeah. this a lot. <laughs> yes. This, this is from wild, Felipe. It? Yeah, it's his Nordest Bardino too. Um, he says a couple of years ago I started watching GMB and initially because of Blake. <laughs> um, Welcome. <laughs> now I watch it because of the love for the lifestyle and the knowledge. Yes, that's the way we've done uh, it. We've won him. We've 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 got him off of the Blake track. That's good. That's good. We've won him <laughs> over. Uh, I would say, and I would say, Felipe, your bikes. I'd say are super nice. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, it's just, I like the colours. I like it a lot. Good job, Felipe. Very nice, well done, very man. nice. Uh, uh, next, Ooh. Jason's Bird 029. There's some hardcore hardtails this week, isn't there? They're cool, aren't they? Really cool. Yeah, yeah really yeah. cool. Good UK um, bike there. So, just got, in back, just got back into riding after 15 to 20 years away. Whoa, welcome whoa. back, buddy. Good to Come see you. Good to see yeah. you. Um, oh, I, do you know what? I, I'm really surprised at how good all of these. I thought hardtails. I thought we were going to have loads of really old bikes. <laughs> it's not. It's all super cool, up to yeah. date, banging bikes. Man, they're rad. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what are we getting a bit? What should we give that one? Oh, I want to keep the stat. Let's say nice. Let's okay. say nice on that one. Well, That's Mark. nice. You know you were just saying about, oh, you thought we were going to get loads of really old school. Just click on this next one, Mark. Click, go on, just, just click. <laughs> oh, there you That's go. That's what I thought. That's what I thought we were going to get. I thought we were going to get a load of those. Um, which Absolute I don't mind. Belter. Which I don't mind, but I guess in my mind, I, 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 I was thinking, yeah, maybe ret more retro bikes. But this one from Massimo, we've got a retro Trek. It's in Italy. Yeah. Um, decided to whip out my old Trek and ride. Was It was quite unpleasant. No rear shock <laughs> and no front suspension. <laughs> it was quite unpleasant. Yeah, so that's, a, that's a hard nose as well as a hard uh, yeah. tail. Yeah. Do you know, my favourite bit about this bike is sort of the matching in triangly frame bag thing. Bring those back. Where have they gone? <laughs> Yeah. Um, next uh, up, oh, this is a. Hang piss on, no, take. yeah, we're giving it a this. nice or a super nice. Which one is it? Um, sorry, for Massimo, I'm giving him a super nice because he went oh. out on it and he gave it one. He gave it one. He suffered. Um, I tell you, someone who I'm not giving a super nice to is this guy. It's Wayne. He's taking the oh. Mickey out of me here. This is a, a retro trials bike. It is an Ashton Justice, uh, designed by me. But Wayne has deliberately sent this in because he's put tan on a bike I designed. <laughs> now that, that is not, I'm not having that, it's Rich. It's the I'm ultimate insult it. to you, isn't it? Right, that's, I tell you what that is, not nice. But hang <laughs> that's on, not nice. know, I'm, a, well, I'm a sucker for a tan wall and, well, okay, I tell you what, if you don't want to ring the bell, bell, I mean, you, you, you stop ring me. that bell, you stop me ringing I'll it. Be, well, I can't, can I? Oh, man, you're kidding me. I mean, you had the opportunity there, Mark. You, oh, terrible. You could have terrible. taken the bell away. <laughs> I tried. Right, next up, we've got... Um, oh, I'm a sucker for this bike. I'm a sucker for this bike. It's from Andrew. It's the Kona Big Honzo. Um, I really, I really like this bike. I really like it. I've, it's got a look, a real, a, a silhouette all of its own. Yeah. Um, and I, I, the silhouette of a bike really... Um, 
is really important to me. That's what I tend to like zoom into in terms of like how I feel about a bike. And I just feel like this bike's got a great silhouette of itself. So I definitely think it's a super nice. Yeah, um, I've but, not uh, seen one of these uh, before. I love it. I love it. I just think it's so cool. It's so burly looking. It's got a yeah. great distance from the down tube to the front tire. This, yeah, it's got it all going on. Like it a lot. That is super nice for me. Do you want me to ring the bell for you then, bud? God, please, please, yeah, please, fine. please. Yeah. Nice. Love it, love it. Great bike vault. Um, Rich, yeah. if you like, you can give us a topic for the bike vault for next week if you want. I mean, I Thanks. love the hardtails. I'm looking forward to seeing more, but go on, is there anything you'd like to see next week? I tell you what, let's give XC a little bit of love, Mark. I want to see all of your bikes, uh, your XC race bikes, your your yes. your XC runarounds, whatever you use. Let's go for a little XC bike special. I tell you what, right. we're going to go full all out, more carbon, the better. I want to see carbon <laughs> everywhere. Carbon <laughs> dripping from the ceilings. <laughs> <It's habit. laughs> excellent, excellent. Right, we're looking forward to the bike vault next week. Um, but we've seen your bikes. Now it's time to see some of your riding with your fails and sends. Let's see what you've been up to. Oof. Some great riding for you guys out there. Some yep. not great, not so great riding as well, wasn't there? Mind boggling in every sense of the description there. Yeah. yeah. Um, great stuff. <laughs> well, thank you for watching the Dirt Shed show. Yeah. It's, uh, it's that time again where we've got to say goodbye. Rich, thanks for joining us in the shed again. Um, it's been my you, pleasure, What are you Mark. doing this week? What, are you ri what riding are you doing this week? Ooh, well, obviously we're still pretty restricted, so I'm doing a lot of rides around home. I got luckily got a lot of woodland nearby, so I can get out of that. And I've got some cool videos coming up, but I'm not going to tell you, Mark. You're going to have to wait and see, mate. I'm not even telling you. Excellent. Excellent. And I, yeah. I, I tell you what, it was a question someone asked me the other day, is how are we making videos in the current restrictions? Well, we are we are working alongside all of the restrictions, yes. obviously, uh, staying well yeah. within the rules. But because it's our job to go out and film videos, we're, start, we're getting to go out and ride a little bit more than everyone else. But I tell you what, the paperwork that goes with it, it oh, is man. unbelievable. Oh my yeah. goodness me. If people could see the behind paperwork. the scenes, our, our poor production manager, he's worn his, he's worn his fingers oh, to nubs, he's been doing so much typing. <laughs> he's just writing in blood at this point. He's That's just... all he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, no. Thank you very oh, much for man. watching, though, everybody. Hey, Mark? It's been fun. I've enjoyed yeah. it. Absolutely. Love, like, and share on your social platforms. And until next time, I'll say goodbye. <laughs>